RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. Hi everyone, welcome to Studio RPV. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Soreo. Thanks for joining us today, Liz. How are you doing? I'm doing great, especially with spring is in the air. I love this. Spring is. We're ready to kind of sail into nice warmer weather. And we are. We're spoiled in California, though. Yes. Very, that's a whole other story. It's all good. It's beautiful out there here good. in Palos Verdes. It is. And you know what's really beautiful? Just across the street at the Terranea Resort, our favorite place to hang out. Can you believe that they, we, all of us are celebrating 10 years of Terranea? Where, where, did did the, the, where did the time go? I know. I can remember being there before anything was up and talking about, you know, what well, just the land was there. And, yes. and being there with Terry Hack, who's the president. Right. Just the big vision. And man, they've exceeded expectations, I think. It's been amazing. They have. Now, you live kind of near there. I do. So you must have really seen it from start to finish yeah well, I mean I watched that building of look like a little city on our coast and um, and it just gets better I mean they just and I was mentioning we had friends visiting from out of town and where did they all stay some stay with us of course yeah, <laughs> they stayed at Hotel Liz but, but most of them actually stayed at Hotel Terranea it's become like an annual event and it's so pretty and though. you know they, they give it five stars so very good. Well, I had a chance to sit down with Terry Hack, and we're going to kind of be doing some more stories on, with Terranea over the next few months, but she... That's so we can go there. No yeah, kidding. exactly. And Another just enjoy to go there, it, right? Yes. Well, because they want all local people yes. to... It's a part of their family. It's a part of the whole, you know, Terranea vibe. And just interesting to talk to Terry about some things that I didn't know about Terranea. And so we'll share with you. Let's take a look. The very, very first time I came was 13 years ago when the project was almost ready to break ground and I was working at another property for Low Enterprises on the East Coast and I came here and I was just overtaken by beauty. It was so beautiful and I could almost sense what we were going to be building. It was really an incredible feeling. I will never forget that. We had taken about 12 years to get all the entitlements from Coastal Commission and Rancho Palos Verdes and we knew that we were making a commitment for the long term. We wanted to build a legacy property that would be here forever. And we needed the community to help us do that. We wanted to reassure them that what we were doing would be um, perfectly matched for this beautiful bedroom community. And it was important for me to give that sense of assurance to the community that what I say we're gonna do, we're gonna do, and we're gonna honor and be respectful in this community. And hopefully we've done that. What are you most proud of over the last 10 years? Going from zero employees, or actually myself, one, to now over 1,200 people who receive paychecks every two weeks. I'm very, very proud that the community embraced us. And that was really important to me. And it, it is the joy that I have to be able to stand up with pride and say, this is Terranea and this is Rancho Palos Verdes. And I'm so happy to have put it on the map. So there's a lot of great memories. I don't know that I could say just one. From time to time, you're so busy, but when you do talk to, to people staying here, what kind of things do they tell you? They tell me like surprise and delight, like the falconer. They're like, oh my gosh, the falconer, it's so amazing. Or they'll tell me that they were walking the pathway and they ran across a neighbor. And a neighbor's telling them all this history of Rancho Palos Verdes. And that memory of the mixing of the residents with our guest is really important to the experience that the guest is having here. Do you have a favorite place here at the resort? Oh my gosh. Now that's a lo loaded <laughs> question. Is, I know. I really believe that Catalina Point, our wedding lawn, is so much joy happens there. And the moment that people are starting their lives, that's probably my favorite point. But there are many, many favorite points. You know, Liz, I think everybody has a favorite spot over at Terranea. Where is your favorite spot? Well, if I was being honest, it might be sitting in the jacuzzi by the family pool That'd and taking fine. in the beautiful view. But to me, what, the most amazing thing is just to go with my family and walk the grounds, mm -hmm. go down to the beach, grab a coffee at Sea Beans, and just sit and look at the view. It's just 
unbelievably relaxing and beautiful. And you know what, you're right, because the view from so many different spots there is so unique and different, and mm -hmm. whether you find yourself right off the living room area, or if you're down by the pool, or wherever, Nelson's, it's just... How about your favorite? I, you know, I don't know, I think that's a good question. Probably down by Nelson's, I love being at that point down there, and just kind of... Very exciting, especially it. now. Right? Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Well watch season. That's right, because you know what's coming up. <laughs> yeah. Our favorite time of the year. Another one of our favorite places is the Art Center. Palace Forty's Art Center, such a local gem. It is, for sure. And I know they have something very special going on right now that you went over and uh, Yes, it is now about. time for the 17th annual Palace Forty's Dream House Raffle to benefit the Art Center. Yes. And this year's grand prize is, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. You have a choice of a beautiful mid-century Pasadena house done by some local Southern California architects okay. or five million cash. Ooh. You're picking the cash, right? I think I would, yeah. <laughs> I think I'd take the cash. Yes. But either way, you're getting something really yeah, amazing. It, it is, is incredible. Most people take the cash because they don't want to pay the taxes on the house. Exactly. But uh, there's a lot of excitement building right now really at fun. the Art Center. We caught up with the CEO and Executive Director, Joe Baker. He's going to tell us all about this year's raffle. 17 years ago was the beginning of the Palos Verdes uh, Dream House Raffle, which is the first and oldest in California. The countdown is on for the 17th annual Palos Verdes Dream House Raffle to benefit the Palos Verdes Art Center. This year's grand prize is a mid-century Pasadena estate, or $5 million in cash. Wow, the house this year is a spectacular Ladin Kelsey residence in uh, Pasadena. It overlooks the uh, country club. Uh, it, it's a, a, a pure beauty, uh, and it's, it's been restored and uh, kept in the finest condition. It's a spectacular residence. The Latin Kelsey Dream House is being showcased in an exhibit at the Art Center, where excitement is building for the May 9th raffle. So the winner has the choice of picking the house, or they can take cash. In the 17 years we've been doing the house raffle, we're the only house raffle that's really given away a house, and that's significant. We've given away two, and we've been eligible to give away seven. For many people, the choice is cash. This year it's five million. The money we, we, we raise from the Dream House raffle all goes to support our operations and our educational programs. And we do a lot in the schools. We do through Art at Your Fingertips. Uh, we do a lot of outreach into adjoining communities. Now's the time to buy that ticket and invest in art education for our community here in Palos Verdes. Support the raffle. So the big drawing is May the 9th at 5.30. That's for the house, which you'll be there because you got a ticket. Yes, they're going to have the draw drawing, as you were saying, at the Art Center. Mm -hmm. And if you buy a ticket, you have to be there. Yeah, I did get a ticket. That's right. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to win big. And But just to let you know, if you want to get a ticket, it's April 26th is the deadline at midnight. All right. So good luck to the winner. That's right. Uh, you never know. You never know. I'll share. Okay. All right. That's good. Now, our next story is... A little bit more on the serious side, but talking about health, I know you had an opportunity to go to a health fair that focused on colon cancer awareness. I did. At Torrance Memorial Medical Center, they had their annual uh, colon, colorectal screening uh, prevention mm -hmm. uh, event that they have. And of course, there's a Rancho Palos Verdes resident that's the nurse navigator there that organizes it, Ann Milliken. Right. And every year it gets busier and busier, which the good news is, is to basically spread the word about why, especially at age 50, you need to it's have important. your colonoscopy. We don't want to ever deal with that, but it's so yes. important because so many um, deaths could be prevented if you would just do that screening. And But right now, colon cancer Maria remains the second leading cause of cancer oh. death in America. Terrible. So we need to work on that. And getting more information is always helpful. So sure. let's do that. This is the first time I've ever walked through a colon. What did you learn from that walk through colon? Well, I learned that I never wanted to have colon cancer, that's for sure. And all of the things that we learned of how to prevent it, that's what's so important today. The colon exhibit always gets large responses from people. The purpose of our event today is to spread the word that colon cancer can be prevented. And if it's caught early in the early stages, 90% cure rate and five years survival rate. More than 100 people attended Torrance Memorial Medical Center's third annual colorectal cancer screening and lecture. The medical team handed out free take-home screening kits and the latest life-saving information about the nation's second most deadly cancer and how to prevent it. 
Over 90% of colon cancers are diagnosed above age 50, and it's very important that you all get screened when you turn 50 years old. There's multiple ways to get screened for colon cancer. Uh, one is to get a colonoscopy, which is uh, the gold standard, because um, that's the only way you can actually detect polyps um, and actually take them out. But uh, there are also other alternatives that are less invasive. Uh, there are uh, take-home stool kits where you could just take a little stool sample and send it uh, to the lab and they can see if there's any blood in the stool. And if there's any blood in the stool, that might be a sign that you might have colon cancer. So I want people to really start to think about their family history. I think that's a really important thing is to start asking your family members, who's had cancer in our family? What age were they diagnosed at? Do I have any of these red flags for a hereditary cancer syndrome that I should be referred and get evaluated to see if genetic testing might be something that would be important for me and my family members? There is a genetic component. Um, if you do have a first degree relative with colon cancer, you're at twice the amount of uh, risk as the normal healthy patient. There's also um, you know, environmental factors. So the food you eat, uh, like, such as a lot of red meat, processed meat. It has been shown that 47% of colorectal cancers can be prevented by maintaining a healthy weight, by staying active, by eating less red meat, and eating more of a uh, plant-based diet. What are the symptoms? How would you know you might have this? Actually, a lot of times people have no symptoms, which is a scary thing. So just get screened. That's the bottom line. You know, you learn so much by going to these different seminars and clinics and such. I know that you did a take-home test. I did. I took yep. a take-home test mm -hmm. and I, I already sent it in and fortunately my results were good. But Great. what I did learn, because I've had uh, now that my age of, and I have colon cancer in my family, I've now mm -hmm. had colonoscopies twice. Okay. But you can layer every year. You can do this at-home test. You can ask your doctor about it. Right. And it just is another way just to layer and, and, and look preventatively. And you do need to get a prescription for that from your doctor. You have to go to right? your doctors to get, to get the kit. All right. Well, good job, Liz. Yes. No, Excellent. it was very important information and helpful. And, yeah. And more important information coming up next, one of our old pals, Dr. Gray Allen, is coming up to tell us about his charity, Freedom For You. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Sergeant Tina McCoy with the Lomita Sheriff Station. Together we can keep our neighborhood safe. The Lomita Station is offering residents free home safety audits to help prevent burglaries. During a home audit, an officer inspects everything from door locks to outdoor lighting, home alarms, and video surveillance systems. The Sheriff's Home Security Checklist has more than 50 recommendations to help you protect your property. To sign up for a home safety audit, contact me at 310-891-3227. Thanks for keeping our neighborhood safe. And now joining us on set, a very old and good friend of ours, Dr. Greg Allen. You are the president of Freedom For You. You're doing so much stuff with teens and kids, keeping them on the right track. And he knows a thing or two about football, too. We'll get to that later. But first of all, welcome. No, thank you. It's good to, to be to here. Great to see you. Have you nice here. to see you, ladies. For people that don't know, yeah. first, let's talk about Freedom For You. You've been here, what, 17 years? Yeah. Celebrating yeah. 17 yeah. years. Amazing. amazing. Yeah. Tell us about Freedom For Well, you. we started it as a prevention focus so that teens wouldn't uh, go to parties and get drunk all night. Okay, that's so good. So there was like some parents in the community and actually the chief of police at the time, myself, we formed this little kind of coalition and then from that we started doing events. We surveyed kids and what they do. So around music and art we shaped these events and then it's kind of grown over the years and a lot of creative arts, life skills, leadership mm -hmm. and uh, service projects we've kind of expanded to. And, work, and working with youth in the community, we were talking about this earlier. You're saying you see today's kids as being more stressed out than ever. So how do we deal with this? Yes. How do we prevent this? Unfortunately yeah. so. Well, there's a lot. You can Google that anywhere because there's a lot of uh, books being written about it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they surveyed kids who are 24 years old who had gone through college and they're living independently. What was unique about those kids is they could manage life and not be overly stressed out. They found out the common denominator was they had done chores in their family. Oh, wow. There you go. Jeez. So the, Great <laughs> coping structure. skills. Yeah. They spent a lot of money to find out about chores in their research, Stanford yeah, research. Yeah. So the more a parent can actually empower their kid to make decisions for themselves and live right. independently and not do stuff for them, the more they'll be equipped to manage college independence and life. And Freedom For You, I know what you do is helping to empower our youth. How do you do that with yeah, what well, you offer? Well, we're doing, uh, we're actually in 17 schools now across the South Bay and the Harbor area. Congratulations. Doing, uh, like life skills, coping groups, and even after school, dance and uh, uh, theater programs. Mm -hmm. But we're just trying to support the kids who are at risk, the schools identify them, and we kind of work to build them build them up. And then the other dynamic that's really expanded the last few years is a, a leadership group of high school kids who are just really great and they do uh, service projects. Oh. So they do a, a peer mentoring of middle school kids, nice. you know, at assemblies and small groups. And also we go on service projects and the kids love it. 
giving, helping someone else. It really gets them outside themselves. It does. They're not focusing, them. yeah, just on their little life, but what goes on around them as yeah. well. That's so that's amazing. kind of a, a neat development. And being a teen is trying. You know, that's the Difficult. thing. Yeah, it's, yeah tough there's a lot years, of pressures to be, no matter how good it is. to be perfect and right. achieve everything and be... A lot of parents are trying to raise the super kid, and kids are really, a lot of them, overscheduled and overmanaged, so they don't have, know how to think for themselves. So did you have a chore chart for your four kids then? Oh, uh, yes, many of them. <laughs> we, we kept uh, throwing them away and everything. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, intentionally, because my parents were like too busy and stressed out to monitor us, right. which is why I ended up in psychology. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you might want to say why his dad was so busy, because well, I know you're waiting for it. Oh. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> now. Greg's dad was, of course, the football coach for the Rams. So, so his, his weekends were busy. He, he, well, I'm sure like the weekdays in the middle of the night and your dad was, yeah. he was very focused on football. Yeah. You a good football player? I was okay. Yeah? <laughs> At least I was on the team playing. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, I remember one of the seminars you had once, it was really for the parents, but to try to tell the parents, you know, you're in charge mm. and you're not really the friend of your kid. You're supposed to be the yeah. one to say, you need to do this, don't do that. And it was amazing to me how many of the parents didn't want to hurt their kids' feelings, right, and right. you were like, you, you can't think like that. Right, yeah. when you're throwing that party, you're letting your kid have their first party when they're 15, yeah. 16, and you know they've got alcohol in the backyard, what do you do? Take the alcohol, mm -hmm. right. you know, confiscate it. Right. If kids are under the influence, I go, we're going to call. I'd have to be like a policeman, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. We're going to have to call it's your parents, part. and you're not mm -hmm. driving. Yeah. Because you have a real risk, uh, legal risk on time, liability risk also there. There you mm -hmm. go. And as many kids are, you know, drinking and taking pills and accidentally overdosing and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff happening. It's very scary. Now, you have an event coming up. Tell us about the event. Oh, yeah. Okay. April 28th, we have our annual fundraiser event. Mm -hmm. It's at a beautiful home in Lada Bay. Okay. A backyard, a stage, and... And it's a tropical garden party, we're calling nice. it. Nice. So, All the, the events are so, so much fun, So if people too. want to go, yes. buy tickets, how do they do that? Uh, the website has information, freedomcommunity.com. I like what you're calling okay. it, releasing youth into purpose. Yes. Yeah, that, that's our goal, releasing their talent, their passion into their purpose. And when they find what they care about and what they want to do, they're, they're calmer and they're more focused and they're less likely to get distracted and get off course. Well, I know you've made a difference in thousands of yes. kids' lives in our community, so we thank you for doing that. And Sunday, uh, April 28th? E yeah, Sunday, April 28th. And uh, yeah. yeah, remember, uh, Rams, any predictions, predictions this year? Patriots well, will they be should, winning They again. should be good. The Rams they should be good, should be right? Good. Yeah. <laughs> be good. We'll good. have some Ram items for the oh. auction for the fundraiser. So nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for doing what you're right. doing. Okay, thanks yeah. for having me. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for being here. We'll be right back. Yeah. No. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Welcome back to Studio RPV. It was party time at the Peninsula Center Library. Maria was there, of course, at the party to raise money for the Friends of the Library. How was it? To raise money for the Friends of the Library, which I always donate to because that gift shop is impossible to not buy something. They do have, yeah, well, we, but we shop wherever we can. It, that <laughs> one is just it's it is out great. of control. It's so good. People need to go there. The book sale. And we always talk about it. In fact, we're going to do a story with the book sale coming up. That's good. In a future show. But yeah, it was fantastic. The events they do there, I you never feel like you're in a library. Right. And and this is amazing. The Friends of the Library does so much for the library community. They and do. it was Mardi Gras theme. It was Mardi Gras and they had the hurricanes and the, the beads. A lot of beads, and, I'm sure. Yeah, it was really fun. It was a lot of fun. Good, I'm glad you went. So yeah. we're going to check it out. Let's do it. Tonight's event is called A Night on Bourbon Street, and it is a Mardi Gras-themed event. This one is put on by our friends of the library, and it is their big yearly fundraiser. For the first time in many years, though, we're bringing it back to the library. So we're coming home, and what they have been able to do to transform the library into the most gorgeous New Orleans street is phenomenal. This evening we have about 180 people here at the Peninsula Center Library, and and it's a Mardi Gras, night on Bourbon Street. 
event to celebrate our successful year of fundraising for the Annex and um, just celebrate the friends of the library. I'm just so happy with the um, turnout tonight and also the sponsors, um, really many community members, uh, board members, uh, Jackie Glass, Pat Foltz. I mean, it's just unbelievable all of their support financially and also just being a great friend. LeBron DeFries decided to come in costume tonight and a lot of people have incredible outfits. So we just told people to dress kind of dark but fun um, so that we can bejewel them with beads as they go marching in to dinner. Tell us a little bit about Friends of the Library and what you do. The Friends of the Library started in the 1960s. In 1978, when Proposition 13 cut the budget in half for our library district, they um, started fundraising and they really planned ahead. They decided that we need to prepare for good times and bad. So they started an endowment and we're, our goal is to get to four million so that God forbid when we're in a downturn in the economy, we understand our friends can't give as much and so we'll always have monies to support the library. The Friends pay for Sunday hours. We're the only library in a 15 mile radius that has Sunday hours. We pay for amazing story times for children. After school, we have over 400 kids come through here weekly. So we really cater to babies all the way up to seniors and in between are the teens that don't have a lot of places to go. So they come here and they study and they enjoy. So the Friends really are just trying to get out into the community and let people know about the library and the services that they're offering, and that's part of the Friends job also, is to enlighten the, the public. Anytime you can expose the library to more people, that's our dream, that's our goal, and this is just one more wonderful way to do that. The library is amazing. They transformed it, and it was New it, Orleans. It was very cool. It's really happening. I think the one it thing, is. like, whenever I go to Peninsula Center Library, it's not just about books. The experience no. there, it's just a great place to be. and It really is. You know, it's not one of those libraries where you feel like you need to be quiet, although I was shushed there once because I guess I was a little too loud. <laughs> and a guy said, you know, you're still in the library. But you definitely wouldn't have shushed at that party because it looked oh, like no, it was no. wild and fun. It was pretty wild and fun. And speaking of wild and fun, Liz. Yes, we had a wild and fun time in council member, councilwoman Susan Brooks's house. In her kitchen. She was our cooking councilwoman. That's right. Now, what did she cook for you? Well, you know, because it's springtime. Yeah. She thought, let's do some nice vegetable dish that's mm. light with some herbs. And so she made a vegetable tian. Okay. And tell us tian. what that is. So it's a layered vegetable. So you can kind of pick and choose. She used eggplant and, and she had zucchini and mm. tomato. Sounds and good. it was really light and yummy. And of course, topped it with some French Gruyere cheese. Ooh, so now yeah, that we just right. told you, but she does it so well. Yes. And uh, so let's uh, get cooking with Susan. Let's do it. I'm Susan Brooks, councilwoman, Rancho Palos Verdes. My daughter made this lovely apron on her Cricut machine. So if you forget who I am, there's the name. And we are welcoming spring. It's been a really cold, cold, record cold winter. And as part of our welcome for spring, we're going to be making a French um, Provencal vegetable tian, and it would be a vegetable casserole. So you can bring your vegetarian friends. This is very healthy, a lot of fun, and zesty, depending on whatever you really want to put in it. We're going to be layering vegetables. We're going to be using some leeks. These are cut up. And I'm going to make a little mixture with them, olive oil and balsamic. We're going to be using eggplant, all our favorite vegetables. We're going to be using Yukon potatoes. And we have some lovely tomatoes. These are off the vine tomatoes. But you know, uh, also some wonderful tomatoes. The best really come from cans these days because they're flash frozen and flash canned. Have also some black olives. You can also use Kalamata olives. We're going to be using some garlic. And we have a nice little mixture here of Italian um, herbs de Provence, pretty much, mostly thyme. And we have some wonderful Gruyere cheese. It is French cheese. You can also use mozzarella, but we're going to be finishing it off with this delicious sh shredded Gruyere cheese. So we're going to start. And the first thing we're going to do is going to get these wonderful leeks moistened up. So I'm going to start. You have to use good olive oil. These are just going to be sauteed. This is what it looks like as these go on. As this is cooking up, I like to caramelize it with a little bit of balsamic. 
vinegar. So as this continues to cook up, I'm just softening this, I'm gonna put the garlic in here now. So we're gonna really have a nice intense smell. This is freshly cut garlic. This is gonna cook up for probably about five minutes. It's gonna be the bottom layer. I'm gonna pour this, these leeks, in and garlic into this, which you're going to make a nice, very thin, nice layer. Now I'm going to set this aside and it's chopping time. And what we're going to do, I've got this wonderful little machete kind of thing. This is an eggplant. So I'm using eggplant for, and you want to try to get everything about the same size. So I'm trying to get them at about a quarter inch. And then we're also going to have potatoes, Yukon potatoes. We're going to have tomatoes and olives. And uh, we're going to layer this. I'm going to start with the potatoes. So I'm going to put pieces of potato down at the bottom. I'm going to brush on some of this bruschetta now. So now we're going to go to the eggplant. Eggplant next after the potatoes. After we do this, we're going to brush on some more of this combination olive oil. This is the regular olive oil with the basil olive oil. I'm gonna put a little bit of this pink Himalayan salt on it now. And a little bit of pepper. The next is gonna to be tomato. So I'm gonna use these canned tomatoes in between, which I've sliced in half. So we have potato, eggplant, tomato, and now we have zucchini. We're going to put some more of this bruschetta on. I'm gonna put some olives on. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this eggplant on. I'm gonna go back to these wonderful herbs. Now I'm gonna to top this off with some fresh tomatoes. We're gonna to put some sprigs of thyme on that. I'm putting it into a 400 degree convection oven and I'm gonna put it in for about 25 or 30 minutes. I have to cover it with aluminum foil. I'm gonna time this and We'll be back. So we just took our wonderful vegetable tian out of the oven. And right now I'm going to tamp down the vegetables. And while we put this in the oven, we had extra leftover, so made a baby dish. What I'm gonna do is take off the sprigs of thyme. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the combination oil. And then finally we have the Gruyere. I'm gonna put the Gruyere cheese on top. So this is going to just crisp up, brown up, just enough for about 15 minutes. Now we're gonna put this in the oven with the top off, no, no foil top. And I'm gonna keep this at 375 and I'm gonna cook it for 14 minutes. And we'll see what happens. So okay, fresh out of the oven. We have our vegetable tea on. And what we've done here is we're going to take our piece of this, the lovely piece that we have with all those yummy vegetables and savory herbs. Put a piece of chicken on here and a fork. And now it's ready for my company. Bon appetit. All right, Liz, where's the food? I know, I knew she was gonna say that. The Italian girl saw all that tomato going on there. Really, it was, it was yummy. She did feed the crew that day. That was nice. But, you know, there wasn't any leftovers, sorry. Oh, that's all right. But you can get the recipe from Susan as she that's would right. love people to email her right, right. here at the city. And uh, so I put that email up for, the, okay. for everyone to watch Perfect. And, and that get it. Good. And uh, it was healthy too, which was awesome. That's always good. Now, we'll see Susan next month at this month at Whale of a Day. She will be we'll there. We'll be at Whale of a Day. April 13th, and we, we always say this, it's a whale of a time. The entire whale community is there mm -hmm. to celebrate the whale migration. It's so fun. At Point Vicente Interpretive Center. Best kettle corn ever, except maybe 4th of July, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, Great. it's really an incredible festivity. Like I said, thousands of people. You need to remember to park so here fun. at City Hall. Oh, right. Um, it's, it's free parking. 10 to 4. Mm -hmm. And like you said, RPV TV always comes. We have yeah. the best time. Very fun. And uh, this year, you know, it's going to, the weather's going to be nice because in April, you know, they used to have it in the beginning nice. of May. Right. I mean, beginning of March, excuse me, and yeah. now that they've moved it, and the whales are migrating north. 
Oh, good. Well, because it would kind of rain. It was kind of rainy yeah, in March, I think it and was it was good. this year as well. So yeah, no, I love it. What do you oh, enjoy most about that? Event? You know what? I was just thinking about that. Again, I think it's really running into so many people that you haven't seen in a long time, which yes. is always super fun. Plus, there's going to be a new exhibit, Liz. There is. There's uh, two new exhibits at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center that have been put in. One has to do about whaling, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the other is about, it's going to showcase the uh, lighthouse lens, the Fresnel lens That's that right. was taken and donated from the lighthouse to PVIC. Mm -hmm. It's magnificent to look at. It's amazing. And uh, really gonna be fun. They have a ribbon cutting lots, for these lots new exhibits. Too, so make sure they're all day long. All right, Liz, that will do it for this episode of Studio RPV. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time.